Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so awesome. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is so wonderful. Thank God for his presence. Amen. I don't know how people even have church without the presence of the Lord. I really don't understand that. But uh, when you honor him, amen, and you reverence him, he shows up. Amen. That's all it takes is just honoring him and just reverence him, reverencing him. Just glorifying him. And he shows up. And that's why we have to always ever be careful, you know, not to. You know, it's it's not even churches. Church is obviously for us, but it's where we come to, you know, worship the Lord. And and yeah, we need to do that every day in our own homes. Amen. Wherever we go, in the workplace, whatever. But it's um it's a special time when, when the body of Christ comes together, amen, and we worship him and we thank him for who he is and for what he's done and for all the things that he's going to do, amen. It's a special time, a special time God blesses his body, amen. So thank God that we have the privilege of doing that, amen. Don't ever take it for granted, hallelujah. But I want <clears throat> to take a few minutes here. This morning, before I go to uh, talking a little bit about the resurrection today, I want to go to 1 Kings chapter 3, and the Lord's kind of had this on my my heart all week long. And uh, because, how many know, you know, in Psalm uh, 35, I believe it's Psalm 35, 27. I actually want to make sure I get that right, but, yeah, it says, Let them shout for joy and be glad and say, that favor my righteous cause. He says, yes, let them continue, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Amen. That's a powerful one. Psalm 35, 27. How many know, again, and, and, and we talk about this all the time, but it's so important that we understand that God wants to bless us. Amen. He wants to prosper us. Why? Because he's a good, good father. First and foremost, because that's who he is. He's a good, good God. Amen? I was actually just out yesterday, you know, putting some fertilizer out in the, the last half of my yard. And, and um, you know, I, I, I was just, just praying and just, you know, it's great to be outside. You know, I've been doing, we've been doing a lot of gardening this week and stuff like getting, gar- getting the garden ready, I should say. And... Um, you know, I, I actually love that. I love being able to be outside, and you know, because a lot of times you're just out there by yourself, and you can pray, and you can just seek the Lord, you know. And so I was just praying, then I started remembering that song, you know, He's a good, good Father. It's who you are, you know. We used to have that one. I don't know. I thought we did. Maybe, maybe we don't. I need to find that song again. But I love that song. Anybody else like that song? But, uh, you know, I was just thinking about it. You know, it's like God just... He is that good. But the problem is too many times, see, people have the wrong perception of who God is. They, they see God as just some kind of like an author, author, authoritarian or, or a, you know, a disciplinarian, right? B- especially if you haven't had a, if, if you maybe didn't grow up with a good father or maybe didn't grow up with a father at all, you know, and you didn't have, you didn't have a good loving father around you that showed you his, his, his love and his you know, care and his concern and everything for your well-being and your welfare. Amen? And then people have the wrong idea of, of, of who God is. But because he's, he's not just God. He is, I mean, that's why a lot of times I don't, you know, I, the, the term God, you know, gets thrown around so loosely in, in our day and age. I mean, it has really, it has been since the, the time. Why? Because there are other gods that people worship. Amen? But he's our father. Amen? He's our heavenly father. There's no one else like him. And, you know, David, King David had a revelation of who his heavenly father was. He obviously must have had a good father. But 
you, you can tell from, you know, his, uh, his psalms and, and his story, you know, that he loved the Lord so, so much that he would just take time and worship him. And that's the thing is the more, that, the more time that you spend with the Lord, amen, the more that you get to understand who he is, the more that you get to understand his character, right? How many think about the only way you can get to know somebody is really by spending time with them, right? By talking to them. You know, we, we, that's kind of like an obvious thing, but, you know, but, but are we really getting to know his character and his desires and his will and his plan for us? Amen? So, uh, uh, going to 1 Kings chapter 3 here, this is Solomon, you know, had just taken the, his, his father's throne because David had just passed on. And, it's, and it says in verse 3 here, Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes and practices of David his father, only he sacrificed and burned incense in the high places. And it says, And the king went to Gibeon near Jerusalem, because remember, the temple hasn't been built yet. And it says, uh, Where stood the tabernacle and the bronze altar? Uh, to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. So that was the place that they would actually go to. They, they offered sacrifices and all the other places because the temple wasn't built uh, as of yet. That was going to be Solomon's job. And it says, in 1,000 burnt offerings, Solomon offered on that altar. Can you imagine? 1,000 offerings. That's a, lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of animals, first and foremost. Amen? But tell me, I mean, think about how long that had to have taken. I mean, that had to have taken days and days and days and days and days. I mean, because you got to, you know, slaughter the animal and everything like that, dress it, you know what I mean? And then and you offer it and again and again and again and again and again. And even if you had multiple altars, you know what I mean? Wow. Talk about, talk about think about that. Talk about taking time to, to think an offering through, right? Talk about taking time to give an offering. T think about, talk about taking time to, to I, mean, I mean, you really put your heart into it. You know what I mean? And I think that's what, you know, sometimes, I mean, for them, you know, it's like you couldn't get past it. You know what I mean? Too many times I think today, you know, we, we, we're in such this modernized society, you know, that we can, you know, we just put our numbers down on an envelope or we write out a quick check, you know, or we, you know, we just drop something in a bucket quick. You know what I mean? We can do it even online these days. You know what I mean? It's, it's so quick and it's so easy to do. But, I mean, they had to take time. Do you see what I mean? They had to take time and, and, and they considered what they were, what they were offering, because it was very precious. You know what I mean? If you had, I mean, this was their livelihood. You know what I mean? When you have bulls and and goats and sheep and and oxen and things like that that they would sacrifice. I mean, that was, you know, that was your like for a farmer. You know, that's your money maker. Amen. So I'm even just thinking, even as I'm reading this, I'm just thinking about these things, because I, because it's it's so, it's so key to what, what is honorable for the Lord, and it says. And in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. And God said, ask what I shall give you. He says, hey, Solomon, my son, what do you want? You ever had God ask you, what do you want? How would you like to have God ask you, what do you want? That's pretty powerful stuff right there. That's like God saying, um, I got a blank check here for you. What should I put on it? Think about that. That's a big deal. And <laughs> that's like, that's like huge. And so, I mean, think about it. He didn't say, you know, uh, this is what I'm making available, so pick from, you know, multiple choice here. He just said, ask what you want. Then there was, there was no, God didn't hold anything back. Why? First of all, because he knew that Solomon loved him, that he honored and respected God. Obviously, that's why that's such a great sacrifice. But that's what I'm telling you. Is see, when when you're prepared to give God whatever it is that you know, when you're prepared to give God your best, Amen. When you're prepared to, to lay everything down, when you're prepared to say, okay, God, everything I have is yours, whatever it is you want, Lord, then God comes back to you and he says, so what would you like? <laughs> what can I do for you? What can I get you? Isn't that powerful? 
But see, many times, you know, again, re <clears throat> religion's not going to tell you these things. Amen? And many people have been in the church, God's people have been so conditioned that, you know, well, God will just, you know, he'll, he'll take care of me. You know, I believe he'll meet my needs. Yeah, he will. God already said a long time, you know, he promised in his word, he'll meet every one of our needs. But what are your desires? What is it that God could do through you if you, if you, if you, opened, if you got rid of the religious brainwashing thinking of, you know, oh, you know, God just wants to, just to keep, you know, just, just a little dab will do me, just enough to get by. So you have to get rid of those things. You have to get rid of that stinking thinking that holds you back. Amen. That's exactly what it is, right? It's stinking thinking. How could, how could you say, well, you know, I'm not really into that prosperity thing. When God is asking people, what would you like? Here's a blank check. When I just read, he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. What? Can you, so, so you have to understand that, you know, it's like there was a curtain here. You know, I'd pull back the curtain. It's like God's like, hey, by the way, uh, I have all this prepared, ready for you. Are you ready for it? And see, that was, that, that, that's actually what I, I want to get to a little bit today is God has so much prepared and ready for you. The question is, are you ready for it? Because it's very hard to receive something that you're not ready for. And the Lord was even dealing with me about that just uh, yesterday. And I think it was yesterday. Um, I was out there moving some, replanting some plants and things like that. And, and uh, because I'm telling you right now, God is getting ready to do some really, really big things. Some really, really big stuff. Really, really big stuff. Like, I'm just telling you right now, it's so big like, this is why I had to go, this is what the Lord had to remind me about Solomon and the temple that he built. And the way he built it, because you go into the next several chapters, because we're not going to get into all that today. But it talks about all the detail, the plans of, of how, you know, uh, he built the, the temple and what he put in it and, and on the finest wood and overlaid things with gold and all kinds of stuff for, for God's temple. Why? Because... God doesn't want to live in junk. Amen. God's not just living in a shack down by the river. Amen. God says, here, you're going to build me this beautiful temple. Amen. They say, well, God doesn't live in a temple today. No, he doesn't. He lives in the hearts of, of men and women today. And that's why he wants bodies healed. Amen. Amen. So let's go and read on here for a minute. And he says, Solomon said, You have shown to your servant David, my father, great mercy and loving kindness, according as he has walked before you in faithfulness, righteousness, and uprightness of heart with you. And you have kept for him this great kindness and steadfast love that you have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. Now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a lad. He's basically saying, I'm still very young in wisdom and in experience. <clears throat> and he says, I know not how to go out. In other words, I do not know how to begin or to come in. I don't know how to finish. And he says, but your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people who cannot be counted for a multitude. So Solomon understood where God had positioned him. He understood that. You know, I've got a very great responsibility here now. All of a sudden, I'm still young and inexperienced. Amen. Anybody ever felt like that? <laughs> Even if maybe you're up there a, a little, little wise, you know, a little older than, than some people, you might still feel kind of, you know, ignorant and, and inexperienced. Nothing wrong with ignorant. Amen. It just means there's something else to learn. Hello? Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with being inexperienced. It just means that's something we got to get experience in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why, you know, you never, never stop learning. You're never too old to learn. Amen. Never think you ever got it all figured out. That's why pride is a horrible, horrible thing. 
It's a horrible thing. It destroys people. So he says, verse 9, So give your servant an understanding mind. Everyone say this. Lord, give me an understanding mind. And Lord, give me a hearing heart. This is what Solomon is asking. Give, me, give your servant an understanding mind and a hearing heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge and rule this your great people? Isn't that powerful? I mean, that was just, I had to have to say God's wisdom right there for him to even ask that. To start with that. You know what? Wisdom would be to ask God for like an abundance of wisdom here. An understanding mind and a hearing heart. Why? Because if there's ever a time in these last days we're going to need to hear God, we need to hear him more than ever. Amen. And if there's ever a time we need, even, we need an understanding mind to know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. And I'm not just talking about, you know, that's a sin, that's not a sin. I'm talking about what's right, what God wants us to do, what he doesn't want us to do. In those things that, you know, that you don't, you know, the, the, the things that concern us for today that are not necessarily written in the Bible. We need, we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Does God want me to have this? Does he not want me to have this? See, and as I've said before, it's not that God doesn't want us to have things, but he doesn't want, he doesn't want things to have us. But God wants to put things into our hands. Amen. He wants to put resources into our hands. He wants to put wealth into our hands. He wants to put properties into our hands. Amen. He said that, why do you think he wrote all that Deuteronomy 28? He said, I'll give you all these different things, you know, and I'll cause you to prosper. Amen. He says, I'll give you a surplus of prosperity. It's God's plan to bless you. It's God's plan to bless you more than your wildest dreams. Why? Because this is then what God says. Verse 10, he says, It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked for this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and you have not asked for long life or for riches, nor for the lives of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to recognize what is just and right. He says, Behold, I have done as you have asked. I tell you, if there's ever one thing we do need to ask for more all the time is wisdom. And even if you think you've asked God for wisdom, you know, just not that long ago, ask him again. Because you can never have too much of it. Amen? Just keep asking him. James chapter 1 tells us that. Hey, if you ever feel like you're lacking wisdom, just ask. And receive. Amen? And he says, I have given you a wise discerning mind so that no one before you was your equal, nor any nor any." Uh, shall arise after you to be your equal. He says, I have given you what you have not asked. And he says, uh, sorry, he says, I have also given you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among, any, uh, among the kings equal to you all your days. Wow. And he says, and if you will go my way and keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David did, then I will lengthen your days. And then Solomon awoke and he realized that the Lord had spoken to him in that dream. And, he and it says, and he came to Jerusalem, stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. So he asked for wisdom. God says, granted, you're going to be wiser than any other person before you or even since or even after. Huh? That's huge. That's huge. That's, I think that's the only place in the Bible that I've ever found that, you know what I mean? God said, you, there won't be anybody greater than you in this area. Other than that, the Bible says God is no respecter of persons. So maybe you might just be one tier less than Solomon if you really asked. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that powerful? And then he says, and then I guess, you know, because if God is against us having things, I guess God forgot what he was all about because then he said, and by the way, I'm going to give you riches, you know, that, that are, are just going to blow your mind. And favor and long life. Huh? 
Hello? What? Oh, uh, oh God, but, but, but I didn't ask for that. He said, no, but, but that's okay. But he said, I, I'm going to bless you because, why? Because he had the wisdom then to know how to handle the resources. Do you understand? So Solomon was very wise in even asking for the wisdom. Did he know that God was going to then add to him riches and all these things? No, I don't think so. He had a pure heart. He had a pure motive. And that's the thing is, if our hearts are pure before God and our motives are pure before God, God will put such great wealth and, and, and resources into our hand that we will be able to use it for his kingdom. Will you be blessed because of it? Absolutely. God wants you blessed. But then what are you going to do with the surplus? What will you do with the surplus? Will you help your brothers and your sisters? Will you, will you make uh, um, ways and, and, and create things that, that we can reach more people with? What will you do with it? That's why you need God's wisdom. Amen. That's why you need his discernment. To say, okay, God, bless me. Lord, bless me. Make me a great blessing. Lord, make me a sign and a wonder blessing. Amen. What about that? What if God could make you a sign and a wonder? And people would be like, uh, what happened to you? Where'd you get all that? Where'd you get, how'd you buy that? Where did that come from? No, I'm telling you, you, let me just tell you right now. When God begins to do that, you're going to freak some people out. <laughs> when that begins to happen, people are going to be, and, and then you're going to tick some people off too. They're going to be like, well, who are you to have all that? Who do you think you are? Where did you get all that? You're going to tick some people off. I'm just telling you right now. You're going to make some people mad. Just get used to it. Persecution will come. Even you, you want the Lord to bless you and use you, you're going to get persecuted. It's just going to happen. It's just going to happen. Why? Because there's always going to be somebody jealous. But you know what? I'd rather deal with some persecution and some jealousy and watch the Lord use me to be a blessing, to be a conduit, than not have it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And you know, for sake of time, I'm not going to go, maybe we'll get into this next week as well, but you go into a couple of chapters down, uh, chapter 10 of 1 Kings here. You just go back and read 1 Kings 10 this week <clears throat> and just prepare yourself a little bit. And it talks about how the Queen of Sheba came to visit Solomon. I've actually read it here before, but it's probably been a little while. But go back and read it and, and, and how she was just breathless and overcome at, at everything that's the house that Solomon had built because he built the temple and then he built the palace for himself. So he, two things. Remember, he built this amazing temple this amazing church is what it was for the, for, for the priests to worship and for the people to worship. And then he built this amazing palace for himself because obviously he was the king. King can't live in a shack down by the river and people, you know, around him have a better house than the king. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> Hello. Why? Because as a king, you've got to be a leader. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm just telling you right now. Get ready for the blessing. Get ready for some amazing breakthroughs happening. Expect it. Expect it. So much so, I want you to expect it so much that you're already, you're already making plans by the Holy Spirit, asking God, Lord, how am I going to use it? Lord, what do you want me to do with it? Lord, what's for that? Amen. Start making plans. I mean, they really just started hitting me yesterday. I thought, you know what? I, I got to get some more wisdom in this area. I need to talk to, because I have friends that God has prospered and everything like that. You know, uh, not like hugely. I mean, I don't know. I, of course, I wouldn't even know how much they had anyway. But I mean, maybe even more than I think. I don't know. But, you know, I have some, I have some friends back home that, that God has really blessed. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, I need to actually talk to some of these guys and, and actually just get some more wisdom here. Because if this is where God has taken us, we need to know. I need, just even in the natural, you know what I mean? 
how to handle some things. What do you set aside? How should you invest it? What does it take to do this? See, because you have to understand, it's a whole change in your mindset. Do you understand that? It's a whole change in your mindset. So you have to ask yourself, you know, am I ready for God to, to, really, to really prosper me? I'm not just talking about, I mean, forget about your needs being met. Like, just forgive and forget about that. And you might be thinking, well, I don't know, I don't know, Pastor Dave, I'm still believing for some of that stuff. That's, but you know, just what I'm saying is begin to look past that. Begin to look past your needs being met to where you become, you become one of the suppliers. You become someone that is meeting other people's needs. That's how you have to see your, that's how God wants you to see yourself. Amen. Isn't that powerful? I mean, my God, that's what happened last week to Tamara. A car shows up out of nowhere. She had no idea. Because somebody decided, you know what? Uh, I'm going to be someone who meets people's needs. And like I said, that, that wasn't me. That didn't come from me. It, I might have had something to do with it in the fact that I've, te- I've been teaching this stuff, but that's it. But praise God, people are grabbing a hold of it. Amen. It's powerful. And that's just, that's just a start. You know what I mean? That's just like scratching. We're just scratching the surface here. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? So get ready. Think bigger. Think way bigger. And when you think you're thinking, when you think you're thinking big, like just think, big. think way bigger again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How could God, I mean, what if God could use you to put, you know, multitudes of people to work? You could be someone, not, you don't have to go looking for a job, but you're someone who's creating jobs. Hallelujah. And that'd be awesome. That's, what the, that's essentially what Solomon did, is Solomon put people to work. It's powerful. I could go on and on and on here, but I'll, I'll, I want to move into the, to the next thing here in just a moment. Don't allow the enemy to put limitations on you. Don't allow the enemy to tell you that you're not worthy to receive it. You know, this last uh, week, Ms. Tamara was actually sharing with me just a, a moment about what, what God was showing you when you really were getting sloshed over there that night. Remember that? You want to share real quick with them what God was, what God was showing you? Because that came to me. I just felt you should share that for a minute. Because this is a big part of it, right? Yeah. Amen. Um, whew, we were at school uh, last Tuesday evening, and um, the presence of the Lord was just so strong. And um, I was just over come with joy because the Lord showed me how precious I am in his eyes. <laughs> and if I'm so precious in his eyes, I need to look at myself that way. That's right. You know, and so my prayer since then has been, Lord, show me how to feel that way about myself. You know, the bumps and the bruises that's happened in life, you know, has kind of knocked me down. Lord, take that away and show me for myself how precious I am, (laughs) you know, because we have to know and believe how precious we are so that the Lord can help us. Yes. You know, we, we have to be ready and open and we are precious in his sight and we have to be precious in our own sight. Yes. Powerful. (laughs) Amen. Exactly. Isn't that powerful? And see, that's how the enemy, that's the only way you you have to understand, that's the only way the enemy can keep what, uh, and I'm just talking about stuff, but, uh, but it does involve stuff. Why? Because we're on this earth. 
You know what I mean? We're not going to need any of this stuff when we get to heaven. But while we're on this earth, we're going to use it. You know, money is just a tool. Don't see money as something that you need. Oh, I got to get money. No, no, no. It's just a tool. It's a servant. See, that's part of this, the, mind, the mindset. The Lord was ministering that to me yesterday. Is it, It's all on how you perceive things. And if you perceive money as something, oh, I got to have money. I got to get money. Then guess what? Money becomes your master. You're trying to work for money. I don't work for money. Money works for me. Amen. Money comes to me, and I go, and I send it out, and I make it work. So you have to change your whole mindset on, on how you see things. Amen. Money's just a servant. It's just a tool. I got a bunch of tools. You know, I keep them here and there and there, and they're there, and they do this and they do that. So it's just a tool, just like with anything else. You know, like all these things, you know, it takes money to buy all this stuff. You know what I mean? Music things and podiums and, you know, all kinds of stuff, cameras and all that kind of stuff. But these are just tools, you know. I'm not like, oh, oh gosh, I, I got to keep this. Wait, don't take, my, you know, don't take my speakers. You know, I'm not concerned about any of that. It's just a tool. It's here. It'll be here. And you know what? Maybe five, ten years from now, it won't be. Whatever. Guess what? I'll buy bigger ones. Amen? I'm already getting ready to buy bigger ones. Hallelujah. Why? Because when we move out of this room, I'm going to need more. Amen? I say, well, this room isn't even full yet. I don't care. It's going to be. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, again, I'm not thinking small. You have to understand. I'm thinking big. And I'm, and I'm going to freak some people out by how big I think. Okay? But I'm just preparing you now. And I'm not even telling you everything yet. But I'm just telling you already. I'm thinking big. Amen. So I need you to think big with me. Amen? And that's why I'm taking you on this journey. So that you can think big. So that when things start happening, you're not like, oh, my gosh, what, what's happening? Is, is Pastor David working for the mafia or something? No. That's not what's happening. I've, I serve a big, big God. Amen? Amen. I serve Father God, not the Godfather. <laughs> I say, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. No. That's not what I'm talking about. Amen. No, but people will, there'll be people that think stuff like that, you know. I mean, my pastor, he's been criticized about all that kind of stuff, you know. Oh, he, he must have somebody, you know, the, the people are working for him, you know, whatever. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to send people around, and, and if, they don't, if they don't pay up, we're going to break their kneecaps, you know. No, that's not what happens. <laughs> See, if you, if you can give, if you can give willingly, guess what? God willingly says, huh, get ready, because... I'm about to open the windows of heaven over you and pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it all. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I've seen God do it time and time and time again, but I tell you what, right now, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's harvest time. Amen. It's harvest time. And I'll be honest, I'll tell God, it's like, okay, Lord, you know, if this is something you want me to have, then God, you're going to have to do it. That's what, I, that's what I told him. Because said in the natural, I can't do anything about it. And then guess what? A couple weeks later, it starts happening. Or months. I don't remember how long it's been now. but It starts happening. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. Because uh, time is getting away from us here. Amen. But you guys aren't going anywhere today, amen? Don't mind if I take a few extra minutes, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's pray, though. And, and again, do what you know the Lord wants you to do, amen? Don't think small. Again, I'm not saying, <laughs> please understand, and I think you guys do understand, but uh, I'm just going to say it anyway, because there's probably people that are watching that say, oh, yeah, he's just after people's money. Shut up. <laughs> I don't need your money. If you think I need your money, take your money and stick it in your ear. Because I don't need your money. Amen. I don't need anybody's money. God is my supplier. Amen. He is my supplier. I, <laughs> believe me, I don't need anything from anybody. Amen. I teach these things. Why? So that you can prosper as well. Because the only way you'll prosper is by learning to be a giver. That's, the, that's why God is blessing us. I'm telling you. 
You don't understand the seed that I have in the ground. Nor can I even, you know, nor am I going to tell you, you know, okay, well, you know, I sowed this, so I'm going to get this. And I sowed this, so I'm going to get this. Uh, that's, you have to just trust the Lord. Amen. You have to just trust the Lord and do what he tells you to do. And watch God open the windows of heaven over you. Amen. Hallelujah. As you can tell, I'm a little excited about this today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Should I get a little more excited? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. No, it's time God's people stop. You guys can come whenever you're ready. I know we haven't even prayed yet, but that's fine. Um, that happens at the river in Tampa all the time. People just start coming and bring in before it's even received. It happens all the time. But <laughs> if, you need, yeah, if you need an envelope, there should be one on a seat next to you or, or a pen. If you need a pen, maybe somebody's got a pen for our brother over there. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you right now. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your blessings. Lord, we thank you that you are so, 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 so good. Lord, there is no one like you. And Father, as we worship you today, Lord, with our tithes and offerings, Lord, as we sow our seed, Father God, into your, into your kingdom, Father, we thank you for the great return. Lord, we thank you for a great return, Father God, Lord, that you can continue to bless your people beyond what they can ask or think. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, prosper them this week, Lord. Prosper them this week. Prosper them this week, Lord. And everything that they do, cause their businesses to prosper. Cause their jobs to prosper, Father God. Lord, cause unexpected finances to come to them. Lord, from unexpected places even. Expected places and ex unexpected places. Lord, wherever you have to bring it from. Father, Lord, just like Lord, we, you told Peter to go get the coin in the fish's mouth. Lord, just like the ravens, Lord, brought provision, uh, Lord, even to the man of God. Lord, we thank you that we are your children. And Lord, you're going to continue to send it whichever way you have to. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, there was a lady that was, I was talking to this week. She's not here today. She, she would have been, but she's not here today. And she was telling me she had, she had like 150 bucks to show up in her bank account. She didn't even know how it happened. She's like, I'm telling you, it wasn't there. And then when I checked it later, it was there. Like, I'm like, hallelujah. I said, yeah, hey, don't stop there. Amen. Cool. That 800 happened with you? Wow. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's phenomenal. I've had that happen too. I don't even know where it came from years ago. <clears throat> and I'm like, how is this possible? I don't know. I'm not going to argue with it. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll just receive it. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> expect big things. Amen? Amen. Expect big things. What is that? Somebody want to check on that real quick? Something banging around out there? Just the airflow. Oh, the oh, is the banner flopping around? Nope. <laughs> Strange. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is the air coming from this? Yeah, Up there? Is that what it is? Strange. Didn't have that happen before. Interesting. God is so good. All right. Are you guys ready? I'm going to take you through a few scriptures here today. Uh, and um, the Lord reminded me of this. I, this is actually part of a teaching that I've done um, years and years. Well, I used to teach it actually in Bible school. And... Um, and the Lord reminded me of the, of the passage, the, the, the teaching, as I was thinking about it, you know, because I know a lot of times we could sit here and we could read, we could go back through and read the, you know, the passage in the Gospels about the resurrection, and that's all fine. You know, a lot of people do that, and that's cool. But the Lord brought this back to my remembrance, and it's called What the Resurrection Gives Us. And that was the, that was the phrase that I, that, I, that I heard in my spirit that I remember seeing, and I was like, oh, yeah. 
And uh, so I thought, I gotta go find that. And so I went and looked it up and actually had it in my notes the whole time. But um, <laughs> so when I found it again, I was like, praise God, let's, let's go, obviously, let's go back through this a little bit because we thank God for, for what he did, amen, dying on the cross. But, but what does that mean for it and, and raising from the dead? But what does that mean for us today? If you go to Revelation chapter 1, let's look in Revelation chapter 1 here. Hallelujah. So if you're taking notes, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. Revelation 1 and verses 17 and 18. And this is John writing here, of course. And he says, And when I saw him, when John saw Jesus, he says, I fell at his feet as if dead. So he fell out under the power of God. Think about that. <laughs> People say, well, what's all this falling out stuff about? Listen, when you, when you encounter Jesus, guess what? When the, it's, it's like this. When the, <clears throat> when the natural comes in contact with the supernatural, something's going to give way. And it's not going to be the supernatural. It's going to be the natural. Amen. And that's why people fall out, just in case you were wondering. And he says, and then, but he laid his right hand on me. He said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, and I am the ever-living one. I am living, listen to this, I am living in the eternity of eternities. He says, I died, but see, I am alive forevermore, and I possess the keys of death in Hades, the realm of the dead. Jesus came to redeem us back from death, hell, and, and, and corruption. Amen? Because that's where we were all headed. I think we understand that. But he came back to give us the keys to the kingdom. Amen? He, he came to, to die and to be raised from the dead so that he could conquer death. He stripped the devil of his authority over death. That's why in Hebrews chapter 2, just given and given another one just to kind of give you some references here. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. And he says here, since therefore these his children, that's you, everyone say that's me. These his children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings. He himself in a similar manner partook of the same nature. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful that Jesus came to, to walk this earth as a man for 33 and a half years so that, you know what, he knew. He knew the things that we would face. He could experience them for himself. You know, because there's nothing like saying, you know, listen, I, I've been where you've been. I, I, I know how you feel, right? That's the only way you can really relate to people, truly. You know, it's like one thing you can kind of, you know, sympathize with someone. Oh, sure, I, I understand how you must feel. But it's another thing to actually know what they've been through. What Jesus does. He took not only the, our, our sins upon himself, because he was sinless, but he took our pains, our griefs, our sorrows, amen, our sicknesses, all that, our poverty, amen, all that, the confusion, all that, upon himself. And he says that by going, he partook of the same nature that by going through death, he might bring to naught or bring to nothing and make of no effect him who had the power of death, who was the devil. So he came, that's why he had to die, so that he could destroy the power of death. That's why, and guess what? That's why, you, you have to understand, this physical body someday will die, right? Unless, you know, the Lord, you know, comes before uh, and, and raptures us away. So, you know, listen, I believe, we, many of us here, maybe all of us, who knows, we might not even taste death at all. Do you understand that? You might not even taste death. But even if you do, even if you were, even if Jesus waited a little longer and your physical body was finally like, okay, I'm checking out now, I'm done, which at some point that's got to happen, you yourself are not really going to die. You're just going to go to be with Jesus. I mean, now, I've been there when people, I've been in the room when people breathed out their last breath. It's actually quite an, the most amazing thing. And this person obviously knew the Lord. 
And, uh, and I was right there with the husband when the wife was passing on. And it was the most, I think it was actually the first time I'd ever been like in the room when somebody died, you know, and they breathed out their last breath. It's quite, quite, I mean, just, I don't even know how to explain it. And all of a sudden, I just, her last breath came. Ah. And her spirit, you knew right there, her spirit left her body. But I tell you, it was the most powerful thing. I felt the presence of God in the room so strong at that moment. Because he was right there to receive that woman's spirit back into eternity. Isn't that powerful? See, there's nothing you have to be afraid of. Nothing to be afraid of. Because Jesus took the power of death. And you have to understand, death actually can't take you until you yield to it. Death can't take you until you yield to it. Amen. Why? Because Jesus destroyed the power of death. That's why Jesus actually had to say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then it says he gave up, he gave up his spirit. He gave up the ghost. He gave up his spirit. Why? Because he had to go and to descend into the, into the realm of the dead, the lower parts of the earth so that he could lead, lead captivity captive and conquer death by rising from the dead on the third day. Isn't that powerful? Whew. See, there's nothing. There's nothing that he hasn't destroyed. And for us, see, that's why this physical body dying is the last enemy for us to be conquered. Sin has been conquered, right? Sickness and disease, the power of it has been conquered. Poverty has been conquered. Our peace of mind has been conquered. Right? I mean, understand all that. And so the, the final thing really for us to shed off is going to be this physical body. That's why, and I'm telling you, when you understand that, that see, there, there's no fear of death. That's why, you know, Paul said, oh, you know, oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? You don't have to fear death. <coughs> I'm going to actually put a post out on, on Facebook here sometime soon that just says, how many people are actually afraid to die? Because the only reason they're afraid to die is because they don't know where they're going afterwards. That should be a great leeway into the gospel. That's why really we take this script, you know, and we ask these people, you know, if you were to die today, and I encourage you, if you don't have one of these, we have them on the back table. But, you know, if you were to die today, first we tell them, you know, how much God loves them. Amen. That's the, good, that's the good news. But if you were to die today, where would you spend eternity? Do you know for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would go to heaven to be with Jesus? And if they can't tell you 100% assurity, you need to tell them what the Bible says. Just read it to them. And say, listen, let me, would you like to know? Let me pray with you. Just say, let me pray with you. Let's, let's, let's find out today. Amen. Let's be assured of this today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2 real quick. I'm going to give you this one. Colossians 2. Paul said, For me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Amen? Colossians 2 verse 15 it says, God disarmed principalities and powers that were ranged against us, and he made a bold display and a public example of them in triumphing over them in him and in the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus, he made a show of the enemy publicly. Now, the enemy didn't even understand it. They thought they were actually winning, remember? They thought, hey, we got him. We, he's on that cross. He's going to die. It's over. But they didn't realize that they set themselves up. They had set themselves up for failure. See, the enemy will always overplay his hands. That's why don't ever give in to fear. 
because at some point, you know, when the enemy thinks he's winning, he's going to overplay his hand. And that's why God's going to come and go, whoosh, pull the rug right out from underneath him and say, I gotcha. There's nothing to fear. Amen? And when you know it's time to just be patient, just be patient. Well, it doesn't look like things are working out. Just be patient. God's setting it all up. God's positioning you in the right place. Amen? Promo pr uh, excuse me. Positioning you for breakthrough. Positioning you for promotion. Hallelujah. Positioning you for blessing. Hallelujah. Positioning you so that your family and your friends are going to come to know Jesus. Hallelujah. Which is the most important thing. Je Jesus had to satisfy the claims of justice for our sins. That's why he actually went to hell and back. You ever had anybody say that? Man, I feel like I've been to hell and back. No, you haven't. But Jesus has. He actually went to hell and back for you, for me. Isn't that powerful? You said, next time you hear somebody say that, just say, yeah, I actually know somebody that, that literally went to hell and back. Just tell them. They're going to be like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Don't you know Jesus? Hallelujah. You need to know him, man. So you can have your sins washed away. Hallelujah. Colossians, I'll give you a couple more here. Colossians 1.13 tells us, who deliver, Christ who delivered us out of the power of darkness, out of the kingdom of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He took us out of the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of light. The Bible says, into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Think about that. Think about what G how excited Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit were to know that they could finally legally redeem us back for the last time. Because for all time and eternity, now God came and he met with certain people and God came and he anointed certain people, you know, the prophets, the priests, and the kings in the Old Testament. <clears throat> but but people could, you know, could only worship God through, you know, the sacrifices of, uh, of, of bulls and goats and lambs, you know, through the blood of the sacrifice. But now through the blood of the eternal sacrifice, through Jesus, we can, we can have that unbroken fellowship with him at any time. Isn't that powerful? That's what he wanted. That's what our Father wanted. Remember, the greatest miracle, you know, it's not, it's not physical. It, it wasn't even the resurrection. It's not, you know, the greatest thing that you can think of. It's not even somebody being raised from the dead. It's when a person who is spiritually dead in their sins passes from that spiritual death into spiritual life. That is the greatest miracle. That is the greatest miracle. Is the spiritual one. Because no one else can do that. There's no other force on earth that can do that. Only the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Only the blood of Jesus can set you free. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away your sins. And can put you into that right standing with God. Can put you into good standing with God. That's what... That's what the whole plan of salvation was, even from the Bible says, even from the foundation before the foundation of the world. I'm gonna, God says, I'm gonna have my creation who I can fellowship with. And that's what Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden until sin came. They had perfect fellowship with the Father. They they were in charge of of, of everything and, and had dominion over everything. And they lost it. But Jesus came to redeem us back that same dominion and that same fellowship. We have dominion over this earth. Amen. Even though there's the prince and the power of the air, the enemy, he, who goes about it and, and causes trouble and causes distraction and causes calamity, we have authority over him. Amen. We have authority to stop those things. Hallelujah. That's why we must pray. 
That's why we must take authority over the power of the enemy and the power that, that he tries to enforce. Because remember, any power that the enemy tries to enforce, he's doing it illegally. Remember that. He's doing it illegally. But we have God's written word, his written law, to say, nope, I don't think so. Caught you red-handed. You're done. I'm stopping you here in your tracks. Isn't that powerful? See, God deputized you. He made you an ambassador of his. He deputized you to say, mm, listen, when you see these things happen, shut it down. Stop it. And then he tells us, bid those people to come into fellowship with me. Isn't that amazing? So do you understand what we have been given in this resurrection? Jesus said, even before Jesus died, he told his disciples, he says, behold, I give you power and authority over all the power that the enemy possesses. And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. He was telling him, listen, I'm giving you this authority right now on credit. He says, I'm going to pay for it here in just a little bit, but I'm giving it to you right now on credit. Isn't that powerful? And they went everywhere. And they, already, and they began to heal the sick and preach the gospel and cast out devils. Remember, even before Jesus was raised from the dead. So if they were doing all that, before it was even finished, how much more? How much more can we do it today? How much more is God wanting us to put things to work today? Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love this one. 1 Corinthians 1.9. 1 Corinthians 1.9. Thank you, Jesus. I love this scripture. This is a good one. That you should put on your fridge. He says, and God is faithful. Everyone say, God is faithful. God is faithful. He is reliable. This is the Amplified. Reliable, trustworthy, and therefore ever true to his promise. And I love this part. And he can be depended upon. Oh, thank you, Lord. And he can be depended upon. He is somebody that you can ultimately depend upon for anything at any time, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You know, you might only have one or two people in your life that you can ever really, really, you know, that you can feel like you can ever really depend upon. But even then, you know, there's always a chance. There's a 50-50 chance, you know what I mean, that at that moment you can't really depend upon them. But God, you can always depend upon. His word is ever true. His promises are ever faithful. That scripture kept coming back to me yesterday, too. I tell you, I was out there working, and it just kept coming back to me. And I don't even know where it's found, actually. I didn't get a chance to look it up. <clears throat> but it says, there has not failed one of all of his good promises. It's powerful. There has never, ever, ever, ever failed one of all of his good promises. What his word promises he will deliver, it will come to pass. It will come to fulfillment. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah, Jesus. And it says, by him you were called into companionship and participation with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We were called into companionship. And to participation. God wants to participate with us. He wants to participate with you today, tomorrow, this week. Where are you going to take him? You are his hands. You are his feet. You are his mouthpiece. Where are you taking him this week? What's he going to do through you this week? Isn't that awesome? Mm. We didn't, again, not like, well, I, I, I don't know, could God, could God really use me? Yes. He longs to use you more than anything. He wants, he wants to participate with you. 
Yeah, that's why you always try and get people to participate in, in you know, like fun stuff, right? You know, it's like, hey, we're going to play a game. Why don't you come on over and play? Oh, no, I, I probably, probably shouldn't. I probably shouldn't do that, you know. No, 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 come on. I really want you to play, right? You ever had somebody tell you, like, no, no, it, oh, it's okay. And it's like, you know they really want to. But but then but they, you know there's like they're I don't know they're embarrassed or they're afraid or whatever you know it's just like you know there's that I mean some people I've seen actually some people it's just kind of like well you know I'm not I'm not really used to having fun like that you know it's like what what is wrong with you you know you you can't you're not used to having fun God is all about the fun <laughs> I mean he's a serious God but he's he's a joyful God. Joy, it's a fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. That's part of that stinking religious thinking that some people have. Well, you know, I'm not really used to having a good time, Pastor Dave. <laughs> Get over yourself. Jesus said, he said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I came that you can have life. Come and enjoy life. He said, I came that you can enjoy life and have it in abundance until it overflows. Why? So that people can see how good God is. Nobody wants to serve a boring, dead God. Right? Why would you want to serve a boring, dead God? No, that's why, man, Christians, that's why you got to get rid of this religious, you know, Oh, well. But, you know, I, I don't understand. I, I've even looked. I've looked. I'm sorry, but I've looked. On, I'm just going to say this. I've looked online at some of the churches. The, you know, these, these religious liturg liturgical churches. And I'm just like, why do people even go and sit through that? Why would, you, why would you put yourself through that torture? You, you think you're doing God a favor? You think you're doing yourself a favor? My God, the Bible says, I don't even know if I'm going to have time to get to it today, but Galatians chapter 5, God set us free. God set us free from, from religion and tradition. The, the Judaizers were trying to come back in. These people that had been saved by grace, that Paul had preached the gospel to them, they get saved. And then the, these Judaizers come in and, and want to circumcise everybody again that hasn't been circumcised. And he's like, what are you doing? He says, did I come to you to preach circumcision? You know, to the Gentiles, who didn't have to be circumcised. That was a Jewish thing, under the law. But it's no different today. People are still religiously trying to circumcise people all the time. You must do this. It must be this way. You, you, you got to pray like this. It can only be the King James, brother. You know, all this kind of stuff. Now, if you really like that, if that is your cup of tea and that gets you closer to God, then by all means, don't let me stop you. But oh my goodness. I don't know how people do that. There's no life in it. That's the problem, though. There is no life in it whatsoever. It's just dead works. Dead works will never profit you anything. I mean, just imagine, what kind of a relationship would you have with someone that, you know, is just, you know, you come in and you do like, and you have this whole like, like you come down to sit and eat a meal, right? And there's this, everything must be just perfectly proper. And, you know, you must sit here this way and you must do this, you know, and you can't talk out of turn and all that kind of, you, you've ever been to a place like that, right? Where it's like, just, it's like, whoa, you know, it's like, everything's protocol, protocol, protocol. That's religion. Now, there might be a time and a place for, for protocol and everything like that, you know, with dignitaries and things like that where you do all that. But that's not a relationship. That's coming to honor a dignitary. We're not just coming. We're not coming. People think, you know, like, oh, we must honor the Lord this way. He, he only likes this type of music, and he only likes it at this. And now we will sing a hymn, and now we will read a scripture, and now we will sing another hymn, and that is the way the Lord likes it. Amen. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I 
What him? God was worship. God's had, God is the best music. He's been worshiping to. He's been rocking out to stuff since before hymns were ever written. And listen, there's some great hymns out there. I'm not against all the hymns. But oh my gosh. People are bound by religion and they don't even know it. See, because once you finally experience freedom, once you finally experience life, oh, you'll never want to go back. I mean, I got ruined a long time ago. I got ruined from from religion a long time ago. I could never go back. Ever. I, I wouldn't even know I wouldn't even I wouldn't even know how. I wouldn't even know how to go back. Do you understand? We have been given the very same place of Jesus in the Father's heart and family. You have been made a son of God, a son and daughter of God. And again, even religious people tell you, no, you can't say that. You're not a son of God. Yes, the Bible tells us that we are sons of God, that we are children of God. No, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace, Pastor Dave. No, you're not. If you've been born again, you were an old sinner. But now you are saved by grace. That makes you now a saint. You're either a saint or an ain't. Amen. See, you have to say, when the Father looks at you, he sees what the blood of Jesus purchased through Calvary. And he sees you just like he sees Jesus. You have to understand that. He see you have the very, you have been seated with Christ in heavenly places. He sees you just like he sees Jesus. He doesn't love you any less than he loves his own son, Jesus. Do you understand that? You've been given the very same place in the heart of the Father. The very same. That's why he sent Jesus. He gave him as an offering, as a seed, so that God could reap back all of his children. All that would come to him. All that would say, yes, I will be a son. I will be a daughter. Not just, well, I'll be a lower class son or a lower class daughter. The same. The same. Hallelujah. Of no credit to ourself. It's only by his grace through our faith. And that's why some people have a hard time receiving everything that Jesus has actually redeemed them back from. It's just because their faith hasn't been able to grasp it yet. But guess what? You might as well grasp it now because when you get to heaven, it's all going to be done. You're going ha- to have it all whether you think you deserve it or not. You're going to have a perfect body. You're going to have a, a clear mind. You're going to have you're going to have a mansion in heaven? I mean, you're going to be walking on streets of gold. You don't think you want the gold now? Well, guess what? You're going to be walking on it when you get there. Might as well take it now. See, I'm stirring you today. I'm challenging you with all this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just take it all right now. Just take everything that God has for you right now. Because that's what he paid the ultimate price for. That's why he died and rose from the dead. So he took all that punishment and torment upon himself so that you could have it now. You don't have to wait. I'm going to end with this one, actually. Romans 5. One of my favorites here. Romans 5. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. These are some shouting words right here. Romans 5, 17. Glory to God. He says here, For if because of one man's trespass, talking about Adam, Adam's offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, that unmerited favor, it's unmerited, 
You can't earn it. Nothing you can do to earn it. Nothing you can do to make yourself even a little better to be worthy of it. Whatever it is that you might need. You just have to receive it. See, it pleases God to be able to give. It pleases him to be able to give you whatever it is that you need. It pleases him. That's why he said, remember we just read earlier, he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Whether you need to prosper physically, whether you need to prosper mentally, whether you need to prosper uh, financially, however it is you need to prosper, he takes pleasure in that. Oh, yeah. Isn't that powerful? Jesus. He says, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, his unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, will reign as kings in this life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have been called to reign as kings in this life. Not when, not when you just get to heaven. That's what, do you understand? That's why Jesus is called the king of kings. He's not talking about all the Old Testament kings. He's talking about you. He is the king over us. Because we, we are kings. We are called to reign as kings in this life. Hallelujah. I should have brought everybody crowns today. Put a crown on your head. Put a crown on Just imagine there's a crown on my head. There's, just imagine there's a crown on your head. Well, who am I? I'm no dignitary. Yes, you are. You're a son. You're a daughter of God. See, you don't give, a, you don't give all this authority to some pauper, right? To some poor person, <clears throat> you know, who's like the bottom of, of the kingdom. You give authority and power to a king. Why? Because he made us kings and priests. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you've got to see yourself. See yourself the way, just like Tamara was telling us, see yourself the way your father sees you. He sees you as a king. He sees you as someone who's supposed to reign over all the circumstances, have authority. Well, Pastor Dave, what if I, don't, what if I haven't seen things, you know, change the way I thought I was going to see them? <laughs> don't, don't stop working on it. Keep speaking your authority over that situation. Because when you decree God's law, God's word, guess what? It has to go into effect. It has to begin to change. Amen. That's why, you know, when I hear bad news, bad circumstances, you know, I don't be like, oh, great, well, that's it, it's over. I guess I can't do that, or I guess that's not going to work out. I, I don't go by that. I don't go by what the news is. I don't go by what somebody told me. I go by, no, 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 I know this is what God's word says, and then I know this is what God told me, so this is what we're going to do. So guess what? That news, my friend, is a lie, and that has to change. Amen. That's how you have to, that's how you have to handle the situations. I'm not standing for this. I'm not tolerating this. I'm putting my foot down. And see, sometimes though it just takes people like to get a little stirred up and to get a little tired of, you know, like I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? Before you're like, that's it, I'm putting my foot down. Well, Jesus put his foot down a long time ago. And then, and he's waiting for you to put your foot down. He's waiting for you to say, all right, that's it. I'm tired of being pushed around. Amen. Hence the fact that we're even here today. I'm not standing for that nonsense. I'm not letting you put me in your bondage. I don't answer to you. I answer to him. Amen. And so bless God, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. And if you don't like it, that's your problem. Not my problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were called to freedom. Go back and read Galatians chapter 5. Maybe I'll get into that next week. We'll see. But Galatians chapter 5. You were called to freedom. Don't, don't allow anybody to put you into their bondage. Amen? 
You know, we are still living in this free country, even though it doesn't really seem like it at the moment. We are still living in this free country that, you know what? I mean, hundreds upon thousands and thousands and thousands of people died to give us our freedom and even to preserve our freedom. And I'm not going to let a bunch of morons come and take that away from us. I'm not going to let a bunch of wicked people, godless people, who care nothing for our country that want to destroy it, to take that away from us. Amen? Amen. Not while I still have breath in my lungs. They're going to have to put a bullet in me before I'll stop defending our freedom. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Amen. They well, what if you do? Well, then guess what? I just got promoted. <laughs> so I can say, I'm not afraid of death. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? You think I'm going to feel it? I ain't even going to feel it. All of a sudden, I'm going to be like, hey, Jesus. Oh, wait. oh, I was just down there. Oh, hey, that's great. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to be rejoicing. Amen. What about your family? What about your kids? They already know. They already know the price. And I'll see them again. Amen. They'll be taken care of. I'll, I'll work out a deal up there. Amen. I'll take care of it. You think God's going to take me? God's going to allow me to be taken or whatever? And then my family's not going to be taken care of? Believe me. Trust me. Just trust me. Everything's going to be fine. And I'm not going anywhere anyway. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> it just reminded me of, you know, some crazy things that started happening, even for my pastor, after um, his daughter Kelly went home to be with the Lord. It was just like a couple of weeks right after she passed away. All this crazy stuff started happening. Good stuff. Good crazy. This new, I'll share it with you. Maybe I'll share a little bit about it tonight. If you come back tonight. I'm going to do some prayer and praise again. Amen. But amazing things start happening. I think she had something to do with it. I really do. <laughs> I think she got up there, started talking to Jesus, and started working some things out for her dad. Because she was all on board with everything he was doing. So just remember, the Bible says, you know, in, in Hebrews 11, we have this great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on, that are praying for us. Plus, you have Jesus praying for you. You know, the Bible says Jesus ever lives to make intercession for you. Listen, how can you fail when you have Jesus praying for you? It's like impossible. That's what I'm telling you. See, it's, it's actually impossible for you to fail with what Jesus has for you to do if you just keep marching on and you keep doing exactly what he tells you to do. It's impossible for you to fail. It's impossible for you to fail because God's already given us the victory. He's praying for you. He's worked it all out. He's already lined up your steps. You just actually have to walk in those steps. You ever gone through like... You know, it's like some place you've never been into, like some kind of a museum or something, right? And they have those footprints, right, that you're supposed to follow the footprints, right? It's just like that with God. He's already lined out actually where he wants you to go. And, and everywhere you go, it's already set up for your success. Do you understand that? And so all you have to do is just follow where he tells you to go. Follow the footprints. Follow the Holy Spirit. Wherever it is, just follow it. And it's all going to work out just beautifully. Amen. It's all going to work out just beautifully. Powerful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. Thank you for your freedom, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's, in fact, as just since we're talking about communion, let's do communion right now since we're talking about freedom and everything that he paid for us because this is it. This is it right here. And then we're going to have a little celebration of what the Lord has done. Amen. Over this last year, I can't believe it's been a year already. You know. And I know some of you we've only really known for a few months and and some of you much longer. Tamara was actually she pretty much she's been here the longest. She was here 
<clears throat> I think it was the, the the following day, the second day that we started. And uh, Darren and his family have been here quite a while. Ben. And we've got a few other people, too, that couldn't be here today, but so excited. And you know what? I look at the things that God is doing right now and the things that God is preparing, even in the, even in the middle of all this craziness, right? Where, you know, things look like they're going to, you know, some people are saying, oh, they could be shut down for months, and other people are saying, you know, it, you know ultimately, God knows what he's doing. Right. Amen? And he's going to work it all out. He's going to work it all out. But we have to, we have to, we have to do our part in prayer, amen, <clears throat> and standing up for righteousness and doing what God wants us to do. And again, he's going to work through us. Isn't that powerful? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. So it's like I said, I, I look at what, <laughs> what God is doing, and I'm just kind of like, Lord, what, I, don't even, I, just, I don't even understand it. I don't understand what, what, is, what is starting to happen. But yet, I know that we serve a big, big, big God who is, who knows so much more than we do. Amen? He knows, remember, the end from the beginning. That's why he's the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah. Powerful. Powerful. Thank you, Jesus. So let's let's just thank God again for what He's done. And you know, on the night that He was betrayed, he, the Bible says He took bread and He broke it and He said, "Take and eat. This is My body that was broken for you. That was broken for you. Went through such torment and, and anguish, physically, mentally." I mean, I mean, despised and rejected. Everybody turned. Even all his disciples that were supposed to be with him turned and ran from him when he was, when he was arrested, when he was taken away. Even Peter, even like, even had to tell him, listen, Peter, it says, I know you, I know you think you're bold and I know you think you love me, but you're going to deny me three times. And he was like, Lord, even if I have to die from you, you know, and I know what I'm saying, you know, is, okay, Lord, I'm prepared. Now, the proof is in the pudding. And I pray I don't have to die for him right now, but I have to, you know, we each have to prepare ourselves for that. That someday that could happen. Are you prepared to give your life for Jesus? What have you got to lose? But he took all those things upon himself. For you. For you. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the great and ultimate price, Lord, that you paid for us. Lord, we are so grateful, Lord. We are so thankful, Lord, for what you have done. And, Lord, this is, as again, as a reminder, Lord, as, as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of what you did. Lord, so that we may even receive Lord, our healing. Lord, that we may receive today, Lord, our well-being. Lord, we may walk in divine health. Lord, we may receive, Father God, Lord, even as you may put that crown of thorns on your head, Lord. Father God, Lord, that you took that mental anguish upon yourself so that we don't have to be afraid. We thank you, Jesus, for that right now. In Jesus' name, receive it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, you are so good. You are so awesome, Lord. Thank you for your... Thank you for your great price. Thank you, Lord, we walk in divine health. Thank you, Lord, we walk in divine health. 
every single one of us, every single one of our family members, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for your blood. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus, right now. I said every bit of pain goes right now in Jesus' name. Migraines go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Even stiffness and soreness right now goes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible tells us that it was, I believe it was Joshua that said, you know, even as his strength was when he walked with, Mo, when he walked with Moses, even was his strength at the end of his days as he continued to serve the Lord. So your body doesn't have to get old and fall apart and deteriorate before you die. Your body can be just as strong, hallelujah, as you were in your young days. Hallelujah, Jesus. You might look a little different, but it can be just as strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's God's word. That's God's word. And Lord, we thank you right now for your blood. Lord, that has not only washed away our sin, but Lord, has redeemed us, has put us back into right standing, has made us a son and a daughter of God. Lord, has caused us to reign as kings in this life, has set us completely free. Lord, we thank you for this right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Divine protection. Amen. Divine protection upon each and every single person because the blood covers you. The blood has washed you, set you completely free, set you completely free, set you completely free. And I just want to say this right now to anybody who may be watching and maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. You've never surrendered your life to him. If today was your last day on this earth, you don't know where you would spend eternity, but I want to tell you there's a heaven to gain. Jesus wants to welcome you into his kingdom someday. But there's also a hell to turn away from. The hell was not made for you. It was made for the devil and all of his demons. But God bids you to come to him. He bids you to come to him. And he says, come. Come to me all the, as you labor and, and are wearied through the burdens and the stresses of life. Give all that to me. And God says, I'll take you. And I'll make you brand new. The Bible says if any person be in Christ, that he or she is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old things have passed away and all things have become new. You might say, yeah, Pastor Dave, I, I, I want to receive that. Then I want to invite you. Just, you simply by faith are going to ask Jesus to come and be Lord of your life and to wash away all your sin. Amen. So just pray this prayer with me right now. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, I ask you now, to come into my heart, come into my life, to be my Lord, be my Savior. I believe that you died for me, that you rose from the dead, and that you're coming back again for me. Jesus, wash me in your precious blood. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for making me a brand new person. I want to follow you. I want to love you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me now. And thank you for this brand new relationship that I have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. My friend, I'm going to tell you right now, as you said that prayer, God heard you, and he's completely washed away all your sin. And you stand there before him as a brand new person, totally forgiven. It's a brand new day for you. Amen. It's so always remembered. Get in your, if you don't have a Bible, contact us. We'll help you get you a Bible. Um, but get in your Bible. Just talk to the Lord every day. That's what prayer is, just communicating with God. And he will help you. And ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, amen, with his power and his fire. Amen.
Hallelujah. But contact us on the, on the website there, revival, uh, excuse me, rivermsp.com, <laughs> rivermsp.com, and, uh, and get in touch with us and let us know you prayed that prayer, and we'll help you and get you some materials. Amen? Hallelujah. God bless you. Happy one-year birthday here to uh, the River at MSP Church here in Hutchinson, and uh, so exciting, so great to have our friends and members here with us today. I tell you, it's an awesome, awesome day, Easter Sunday, but yet also uh, one year celebration of all that God has done. We've seen a lot of awesome things happen. Many souls saved, many people filled with the Holy Spirit, many people healed. Amen. And, and you can hear, see some of those testimonies on our YouTube uh, page or on our Facebook page, the River MSP uh, Facebook page. But to come and visit us here uh, as soon as you can. Amen. And uh, we'd love to have you be a part. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.